So if you've been following this channel, you've probably been wondering why I've been doing so many Lens Studio tutorials and these glasses would be the reason why. You need to know Lens Studio to be able to build for these things, so I think it's a valuable thing to learn. I don't know honestly what I'm allowed to share about these glasses yet, so we won't do a whole video on these today, but um, for now we're gonna dig into Snap's new visual effects graph so we can make some particles come out of our face. Let's get into it. Okay, so we got a brand new Lens Studio project here. Let's first save it. I'm just gonna call this test. Cool, and then let's delete the lighting. We're not gonna need that. Um, let's first add a uh, face occluder. So let's go face mesh, um, head binding, face index zero. That looks good. Uh, face mesh, okay, let's go. Let's add an occluder legacy. Graph occluder, put that in there for material. And then on our face mesh, let's check all this stuff. Cool. So now we need, uh, first let's make it come out of our left eye. So let's go, let's add a head binding. Um, this is going to be face index zero. And then let's switch this to left eyeball. Face occluder, let's just rename this to effect. And then let's zero this stuff out. So let's put ones in for here. And then let's zero this stuff out. Cool. Looks good. We're not going to need this render, render mesh visual. Let's delete that. But we are going to need a VFX graph. So let's go VFX empty. Open this up and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so yeah, this is like a node-based particle editor. So you got these three nodes. Um, the first one, spawn particle. This is like your start function. This is like your update function. And then your output quad is kind of like how it ends up uh, rendering. So let's just get something working so we can see something, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna need is a position. We need to pass in the um, position from our transform. So we're gonna go uh, float parameter, that's gonna be X, Y, Z, and we're gonna call this position. And then script name, we'll just make it the same thing. We'll just call it position as well. And then for here, we're going to add a, what is it? Uh, oh, we're gonna do volume. So set position volume and let's do a sphere. So we're gonna make our particles come out of a sphere and we're going to set the center point from a script. Uh, so radius, let's change this to like one. And then the only other thing that we're gonna to need to really like see some particles I think is direction. So let's duplicate this float parameter and then let's make this um, forward. This is gonna be our uh, forward vector of our transform. And then let's go here and let's add directional, add force directional, I think. Yeah, we can drag in our forward vector here and the strength. Uh, we'll probably want to set that higher. Let's go like, let's go 400. Okay, now let's make a script to actually pass in these uh, values. Okay, so let's add a new script and we'll just call this uh, VFX controller. So on our effect, let's drag on the script and then let's drag on our empty VFX. This should create a VFX component, beautiful. So now we can see some particles, but they're really not responding very well. So let's change that. So inside our script, the first thing that we're gonna need is a reference to our VFX component. So let's go VFX component, and let's just call this effect. And then we're gonna need to control it in an update function. So let's go script.createEvent, and this is going to be an update event. We're gonna bind that to an update function. And so then down here, let's just create that update function. Okay, so to set the position, we're gonna go script.effect.asset. So this is getting the global effect asset, which we're gonna to have to do something with later. Dot properties, and we can get that property by name. So the first one is position, and we're gonna set that equal to this transform's um, world position. But to do that, let's get a reference to this transform. So script.getSceneObject.getTransform, and we're gonna set that equal to a variable named transform. And so then here we can just do transform dot get world position. And the other thing that we wanted to send in was the forward vector or the facing facing vector of this transform that the script is on. So let's set the forward property and let's do transform dot forward. What is the issue here? Oh, we didn't pass in that asset yet. So let's do that. Let's get this out of the way. Let's go to our effect and it's looking for uh, an effect component. So let's drag that in here, cool. So now this is actually going at the direction of our eyes. But the one weird um, gotcha here is that by doing script.effect.asset, that's, that's affecting the whole, uh, that's affecting the global asset. And you can't have different instances of that 
asset with different behavior. So what we need to do is clone that effect. So we can go script.effect.asset. So we can set this asset to a cloned version of the same asset. Effect.asset.clone. So now everywhere the script is, is going to create a new instance of this asset so we can modify each one independently. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Let's jazz it up a little bit here. So yeah, right now these are all a constant size. So let's um, make these fade in and out. So you can do set size, uh, fade in and out. And let's change this from uh, 0 to 0 0.5 and faded in time is 0 to 0 0.5. So cool. That has a nice effect here. Let's add more particles. So spawn rate, we can change this to like 1,000. Max particle life, let's go like half a second. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. Now let's modify the color a little bit here. So I think you can do a color ramp or no, let's do, yeah, set color by age. This should have the same effect as like a color ramp. So start color, let's, I think in my example, I did like a blue. Okay, let's do that and let's fade it to, yeah, like a red. Why is it not going to blue? Oh, I think that's because we have some alpha on it. So let's, oh yeah, on this output quad, we can set blend mode to normal. And there we go. So now we can actually have some alpha in our particles. So yeah, this is starting to look like something. So yeah, let's go. So on this output quad while we're here, let's add an align with camera because I think that makes it look a lot better. Align to camera and then velocity stretch amount. Let's just go like, I don't know, 0.1. And then for this update particle, you can add like different forces and stuff. Um, we can also add like some drag and then you can even add some gravity if we want. Let's go gravity. So yeah, now you see they're kind of going down. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's make some more things configurable via script here. So um, on this spawn particle, we also have a radius and a scale. So let's expose that so we can set that via script with our different instances of this effect. So let's add, actually we can just duplicate this and let's make this radius. Radius, this is gonna be one channel. So just make that X and we can drag this radius into there. Oh, let's set the script name also to radius. And then let's duplicate this one more time and then let's set the scale. So we're gonna do the same thing for scale. Call the scale. Script name is gonna be scale and that's yeah XYZ three channel, that looks good. Let's drag that into here. Now let's go to our script and uh, add those properties in. Let's just duplicate this here. So the first thing that we're going to need is going to be a float parameter and we'll just call that radius and then let's duplicate that and make a vec3 and that's going to be scale. So now let's duplicate this down here and let's first set the radius so that's going to be the property name is radius and that's going to be script.radius. And we can duplicate that here and then we can do the same thing for the scale. So the script name we put in the visual effects graph was scale and we can do script.scale. So now back in the inspector, you'll see these are exposed. So we can do one. We can change this to all ones. I think that's what we had before. Maybe the scale could be higher, 1.5. Yeah, cool. It looks pretty good. So now let's just add this to more transforms. So uh, head binding, we can duplicate this and we can do right eyeball. We can also duplicate this and we can do the mouth. So you'll see the mouth, you might want this to move back a little bit so we can actually just take this transform and just move it backwards. Uh, yeah, so let's go backwards and up. And then it could probably, this effect could actually be bigger. So let's go scale 1.5, let's set scale to one. Cool, yeah. So now if we disable these, you could also use this exact same effect for like um, the body. So if we added a, let's see, uh, body mesh, I think it's called, a 3D full body tracking. Yeah, add that one. And then let's create, uh, actually let's just duplicate this effect. Bring it down here under the 3D body tracking. And we'll just call this, call this left hand. And then, yeah, everything looks good there, actually. Well, we could play with that later, but so for here, we can go left hand, where is that? Uh, left hand is there, let's drag this in. And then let's go to our preview and let's find, where's the dancing guy? This one looks pretty good. Oh, but we want video. Video dance, cool. So now you can see, yeah, that effect is coming out of your hand. So in this case, this is why we made this stuff configurable. You'd probably wanna increase the radius to like 10 and yeah, 
you get the idea. So I think you could do some pretty cool stuff with this. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for today. Hopefully you guys like this video. Um, hopefully in the next video, if I'm allowed to share more stuff about those glasses, we can just do a video where we make something for the glasses because I think that would be super fun. But yeah, anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. Goodbye.